Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? You can unmute and then. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, then. Uh, shall we start? Uh, <clears throat> so today's uh, topic is negotiation, which is an interpersonal competence coming under human relations. So I consider this as an advanced aspect of human resource management. Uh, <clears throat> okay, then negotiation. So you can see the uh, definition, my definition of negotiation, uh, mutual discussion and arrangement of the terms of an agreement. Mutual discussion and arrangement of the terms of an agreement. So uh, you know, doing negotiation is inevitable for you and I. In the life of a manager, negotiation becomes an essential thing for various purposes with various people. It is inevitable for a serious manager to engage in uh, negotiations. So then what is this negotiation? Basically, it involves a mutual discussion, normally between two parties. And also, it involves an arrangement of an agreement that contains the relevant terms, relevant terms with regard to the subject of negotiation, subject of negotiation. It may be, it may be uh, developing a new contract of employment, or it may be uh, developing a new contract of uh, collective agreement, you know, uh, collective agreement. So that's the subject of negotiation. So negotiation is a mutual discussion, an arrangement of the terms of an agreement. So this is uh, one, so it involves conferring with another person to resolve a problem by Professor Dobrin. And then the negotiation is the means by which people create synergies and resolve differences create synergies and resolve differences, especially for the purpose of uh, increasing profits and profitability, competitive advantage. So that definition uh, was given by Society for Human Resource Management. And what is the purpose of negotiation? It is to generate mutually beneficial outcomes to the parties involved through dialogue. So mutually beneficial outcomes to the parties. If there are two parties, then ideally we expect that both parties get uh, benefits because of the negotiation. So that's the purpose of negotiation. So then why is negotiation? There are many reasons to solve a problem, to achieve a gain, to sort out differences with other people, to get what a person needs, to reduce costs associated with close contracts, legal fees, compensation, etc. Assume you have been given, uh, assume you, you, you were just uh, hired by an organization, and then according to the letter of appointment given by the organization, you are supposed to be paid uh, with say uh, salary of uh, one lakh per month, but indeed you know uh, you are not being paid. You know you you realize you experience that your salary is less than that. Then you have a problem, and then you have to negotiate with you know the relevant party to settle it uh, to improve relationships. Uh, Okay, before, yes, uh, if you take that uh, example again, 
according to the appointment letter so it appears say 1 lakh but you were promised during the interview you were promised to be paid with 1 lakh and 25000 uh, then we can consider that there is an error in the letter of appointment so therefore to yes for a flawed contract by then to improve relationships especially relating to personal life even relating to business life uh, then to enhance competitive advantage so these are uh, specific uh, reasons which necessitate uh, negotiation so you know negotiation is common at work essential for solving conflicts because we are people and then people tend to have conflicts where there are people there are conflicts several times you must have heard about this where there are people where there are employees uh, there are conflicts on ways every day there is a probability of occurring conflicts among people conflict is part and parcel of living and working with other people mutually beneficial agreements with people inside and also people outside for improving profits profitability then the human development that's another uh, reason okay then negotiation as a critical activity of the head of hr so if you take the head of uh, human resource department Uh, may be called as uh, human resource director or human resource uh, manager or deputy manager deputy general manager human resources negotiation as a critical activity of the head of the chart in fact the uh, that the manager the hr head of hr becomes a negotiation maven so according to masters and others Uh, as a negotiation maven, he or she needs to play three roles. Three roles: advocate, so making the case that negotiation is preferred method of reaching agreement. There are several methods of reaching agreements, solving conflicts. But the head of department, you know, can develop a case uh, within the organization that negotiation is the preferred method that is better than other methods of resolving conflict so that case you know has to be uh, created by the head of the department so that is normally considered referred to as playing the role of advocate and then we have the builder help identify and construct the skills needed to make negotiation as a core competency in your organization so if negotiation is the preferred method of reaching agreement changing behavior and resolving conflict then the every relevant manager every relevant employee must possess an educate degree of competence in successful negotiation then successful ability to negotiate successfully should be considered as a, as a core competence and then this competence uh, within the each relevant employee has to be developed then that responsibility mainly rest with the head of human resources then we have practitioner you know the practitioner role lead by example by honing you on uh, negotiation skills so if you are the head of human resources then you have to practice you are supposed to you are supposed to establish the case that negotiation is the preferred method method for solving conflicts and also then you have to develop negotiation capability as a core competence within all the relevant employees and then of course you have to practice yourself when you have problems when you have conflicts when you are supposed to solve them then in order to <coughs> solve those conflicts you have to use negotiation then only you will uh, give an example to others to follow you right then as far as the head of uh, human resources is concerned that person has to deal with various negotiations uh, with various uh, people 
to achieve various objectives or purposes. So hence, there are various types of negotiation, various types of negotiations. These types we can break into two main categories. One is organizational, the other one is non-organizational. Then again, organizational uh, negotiations, we can divide into two HR negotiations and not non-HR negotiations. Non-HR negotiations. Then as far as HR negotiations are concerned, then again, there are two uh, types, formal HR negotiation and informal HR negotiation. Formal HR negotiation and informal HR negotiation. Then under non-human uh, resource negotiations, so, so we have two, formal uh, non-HR negotiation and informal non-HR negotiation. Then under non-organizational negotiations, basically relating to personal lives, personal lives. Uh, then personal, you are on. That means if you are the human resource manager, then you have to negotiate to solve problems relating to, you know, you are. And also, the other one is, uh, you will have to deal with uh, negotiation to solve problems of others under your personal life, under your personal life. So there are then various types of negotiations. So you are supposed to learn some examples under each type, each uh, subtype. So then take informal, HR negotiations, informal HR negotiations. One is to settle verbal grievances presented by employee. Assume you are the head of HR or you are the manager and then one of your subordinates has a problem of getting promotions. That person has been expecting to be promoted assume since uh, two years, two years or for two years, you know, for two years but that person has not yet been promoted, then that person has a grievance of not promoting, then that person comes to you to settle that grievance. Informally, you know, informally. Not with, uh, not with a written uh, grievance, not with a written request. Informally. Another example to arrive agreements on salaries and benefits with job candidates at interview. So in the north, you know, there are, I think, uh, the, there are two examples given uh, under the, what do you call, under the title, the caption, the uh, vignettes, vignettes, practical scenarios. Okay, then uh, to make a count offer to an excellent employee who has decided to resign to accept another job from organization. Assume I am your superior, then you are the employee, you got a job which is a better job, then you decided to resign. Then you came to meet me uh, to inform your intention of resignation. You expect to resign uh, from the beginning of uh, next month. From the beginning of next month. Then I will call you, you know, I will have a discussion with you. I can, you know, so assume that you are, uh, with the new job, you know, your salary increment is your salary increase is only ten thousand. But then I can, you know, negotiate and then I can uh, make an arrangement to pay you more than ten thousand. Then hopefully you will change your uh, decision of resignation. Uh, that's that's an example relating to this informal one, informal negotiation. Then to persuade MD managing director. To accept and support a new HR program. Assume you have designed a new human resource management program like for performance evaluation, performance evaluation of middle managers. Then you want to get the support of the managing director for that, to implement that. Because the final responsibility rests with the managing director about HR program. You are there as an expert, if you are the human resource manager, as an expert to formulate HR programs. 
uh, to implement, you have to get, of course, the official permission of the MD. Then you have to persuade, you know, you have to uh, have a negotiation by, by, by uh, convincing the managing director about uh, benefits of the new program. If the managing director, you know, understands that the benefits of the new HR program are significant, significantly exceed the cost of the new HR program, then of course MD uh, gives the official permission to implement it, even with an official circular. And to get approval for a professional development opportunity for you or your subordinate, for you or your subordinate. Assume, you know, uh, you are an employee, so then uh, reporting to me as the boss. Then you got a special training opportunity. Assume you got a scholarship by a well-known university to follow a short program. Assume one month program about uh, okay, management executive report writing, management uh, reports writing. And then you are seriously, you know, enthusiastic to follow that program. But then the money, you know, the, there, is a, there is a fee involved. And then to get the money from the organization, then I have to negotiate with the relevant MD, you know, relevant M MD or my superior. Okay, right. Then the formal HR negotiation to approve next year's budget. Next year's budget for the HR department. Then to decide duties and types of authority to be delegated related to functions of the HR. But, uh, you must have learned that, you know, there are different types of authority. Line authority, staff authority, concurrent authority, functional authority, like. So therefore, normally, there must be a discussion and then there must be an agreement among the top managers about the delegation of authority. And for example, if you take the human resource manager, head of HR, then head of HR, you know, uh, should should be you know head of HR should be allowed to take you know line decisions. I mean uh, orders to give orders about performance evaluation, about uh, discipline management. You know some functions you know it is uh, essential to give functional authority. Otherwise the head of HR you know cannot uh, make orders. Only you know. If the, normally the head of HR has a staff authority, that is the legitimate right to give uh, suggestions, give advice. But the under staff authority, the head of HR doesn't have the legitimate right to give orders to others. Orders cannot be rejected. If orders are rejected, then uh, there will be a serious misconduct that is called insubordination. Okay, then to arrive at a collective agreement with unions. Very good example, formal example. And on, on the formal HR uh, negotiation, a very good example, right? Then in settle an industrial dispute, negotiate with relevant employee union, LT, LT stand for labor uh, tribunal, then government agent conciliate. To determine how HR programs such as rewards will be integrated during a corporate merger or acquisition for the business expansion, mergers, acquisitions occur. So the reward, so assume you know there are there are two companies. Now these two companies got merged. The one company had a um, the different a reward system. The other company also had a different reward system. Then we have to decide after merging, you know, which one are we going to follow? Uh, one, one alternative is we can uh, let both uh, organizations follow their own uh, system or we can combine. You know, we can combine, you know, uh, and then we, we can combine by using the good things of the both 
reward systems and develop a new one, better one, after the acquisition. So therefore, the negotiations involved. They make contracts with consultants or vendors such as reward specialists or insurance transport providers. Assume as the head of the char, you know, uh, head of the char uh, has to, yes, uh, in case of providing transport facility to employees. Assume uh, there is a need of renewing the contract contract or you want to find a new vendor to give that uh, transport uh, service transport service assume there are two uh, or three three uh, three vendors then to, you know uh, you can you can give the transport service to only one vendor then you have to decide who is the best one then you have to negotiate with these uh, three vendors and then uh, later you have to decide uh, the best vendor. Okay, then uh, for also in the in the north you can find uh, other you know uh, examples. Uh, examples of personal you know uh, personal Negotiations relating to your own and also uh, problems of other problems of other. So in the north, uh, examples have been given. In the north, examples have been given. Right. So then, uh, <clears throat> okay. If you take. Uh, like this one, you know. A non-organizational, then the personal, your own one, your own problem, you know, because of your own problem, you have to deal with. For example, assume, you know, uh, you are married, then uh, tomorrow will be a holiday. Then your plan is to go to, uh, your plan is uh, go to somewhere, you know, uh, maybe assume the goal, you want to go to goal uh, as, a, as, a, as a trip as a trip, but your spouse, you know, wants to use that holiday as a pilgrimage to Anuradhapura and Damulu. Uh, then there is a conflict between you and your spouse because only tomorrow, you know, the uh, tomorrow will be sufficient uh, to carry out only one plan, trip or pilgrimage. Then you have to negotiate with your spouse. Uh, that is an example. Coming under this. Then an example coming under this personal, you know, others' problem. So assume uh, your, your, okay, your, your son is a matured person and now the uh, time has come for your son to get uh, married. And then your son wants to marry to person A. But your mother, uh, the son, son's, son's mother, uh, that means you are uh, you assume, yes, your spouse, your spouse you know, wants your son uh, to marry to another person, a relative to her. Now there's a conflict, serious conflict between your son and uh, your spouse, your spouse. But the relating to your personal life, you know, son's problem also is relating to your family, your family. Uh, then you you will have to negotiate with the spouse, also with the son, to settle the problem. Uh, that is an example coming under personal others. Okay, right. Any questions? Any questions? Hello. So I have one question. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. About the merge case, uh, you told that the uh, in case of uh, merging uh, two different companies, believe that uh, assume, assume that one HR manager, one HR manager from uh, uh, acquired company uh, received a hundred thousand salary, but uh, the other company which is going to acquire 
his salary is uh, 120,000. Uh, so can we reduce the uh, salary uh, from 200,000? Uh, normally, normally, uh, remember this, you know, reducing salaries is a very sensitive thing, negative thing. It is not good. It is not good. Uh, according to ideal HRM, normally we don't do that. Yeah. No, for, for new employees, okay, new employees, the reduced salary can be uh, implemented, but for current employees who have been enjoying a better salary, normally we let those uh, employees, you know, uh, have negotiations their higher salaries until they retire, until they leave. Uh, another thing is, uh, maybe then uh, we, we can have a serious discussion and then we can have a decision of doing a job evaluation, serious job evaluation by using point system. And then we can decide, you know, uh, in case of a merger, then we can decide one structure for both companies. Then uh, there will be, you know, but anyway, if one company is very profitable compared with the other one, then again, practical problems. Then the both companies need the uh, two structures, two job evaluations, and then two pay structures. But usually it is not good. Because then the person will be unhappy, unhappy you know, then how can we get the motivation of the person? Because uh, financial things are, especially countries like Sri Lanka, they, they are given with more value. They are given with priority. Otherwise, there must be non-financial things, you know, which will compensate that reduced amount. Maybe greater promotion opportunity, maybe within a very short time, if we can give an assurance to the relevant person. Uh, to get a better, you know, uh, to give a promotion that involves uh, significantly a higher salary. Then until then we can, you know, uh, console the person to be patient. All right. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, then for negotiation games from your perspective. So normally, this is uh, this is you, this is the other person, and then you can see. Uh, Four possible results of a negotiation. After finishing a negotiation, there can be a result which is uh, one of these four. Lose-lose, win-win, lose-lose, win-lose. I think uh, with these things you are familiar. So therefore, I'm not going to discuss. Uh, our time is uh, very important. Right. Then uh, before learning uh, basics or fundamentals of negotiation, uh, there are certain things, so what I call is uh, primary negotiation, okay, preludes, preludes uh, for good negotiation or pre prerequisites. In other words, foundation for good negotiation. There must be certain prerequisites uh, to be a successful negotiator as a skill you know after this lecture normally we expect you to develop the knowledge of uh, negotiation and also develop your skills uh, your skills so that means actually you must be able to engage in uh, successful negotiation successful negotiation so therefore there are certain preludes so these are the preludes. Uh, good attitude about people and good attitude about negotiation. Listening, you know, good ability of listening. Then conflict at conflict management. Good ability of managing anger, right? Before that, managing anger. And then good understanding about conflict and conflict management. So if you don't have these things, it is very hard for you to become a successful negotiator. Successful negotiator. So then check whether you have good attitude about people. Then good attitude about negotiation. And if you don't have, then purposefully, advertently, you have to develop a good attitude about people. 
a good attitude about negotiation. So I hope that you have a good ability of listening. But anyway, surprisingly, this is also missing from many people, you know, many people. Many people, you know, they have the ability of speaking. They have the ability of making good presentation, even excellent presentations. But surprisingly, majority of people don't have the ability of listening. Ability of listening. Even in order to get the best from the uh, lecture, you must have this ability, ability of listening. That's why the nature has given you uh, two, two, two ears and only one mouth. The implication is that talk less, listen more, listen more. Right, then, okay, then... Uh, <clears throat> Let us do a kind of exercise. Uh, I think in the north, I have given that. So you got this one uh, right. Yes, here one. Attitude about, here is the one. Attitude about people. So this is an exercise developed by myself in order to uh, assess the degree of or the nature of attitude of a person about people. Shall you do that? Attitude about people indeed. So indeed, not only for negotiation. You are taking this course as an advanced course. Then every person in a charin must have right attitude about people. Not only People in HR and professionals in HR, all managers in other fields also, must have a right attitude about people. Otherwise, they will, well, you know, it is very difficult for them to be good people managers. They may be HR specialists, HR generalists, or managers in other fields. But managers in other fields also have to deal with HR. Then they must be good. They are required to be good people manager. Every manager. That's why initially you must have learned that the responsibility of HR rests with every manager. Okay, then let us take this one, right? Uh, humans, because this is online teaching interaction is very <clears throat> limited. So the human humans are the most precise gift of the nature. Do you agree strongly? Yes. Yes. Of course, we have to correct. Uh, then, the, then the human resources are the most important resource in an organization. Strongly agree. Time is more important than humans. So normally, people think maybe indifference. The majority of the people may check in as indifferent. Or I uh, agree. But ideally, because here we are testing. The nature of, we are evaluating the nature of the attitude about the people. Then for a person uh, with the most appropriate attitude about people, the ideal answer is strongly decided. Time is more important than humans. Even time is there because of humans. Time, has, time is calculated by humans. Without humans, you know, the time becomes useless. We can't work more than we can. Strongly agree. We can't work more than we can. Yes. We can't work more than we can. So it indicates, you know, the value of the people. An organization cannot perform more than what its employees perform. Same thing, but at the organizational level. An organization cannot perform more than what its employees perform. So then overall organizational performance is the summation of summation of the performance of each employee or all the employees. Then if there are no humans, there will be no need for negotiation. Strongly agree. Some people cannot be developed. No, strongly disagree. Personally, you may think that you know it's very difficult to develop some people. There are very, very bad people who don't have any kind of potentiality. Any kind of potentiality or potential. Potential. 
uh, ability to you know uh, learn in future and then improve the skills in future potential so it's strong but anyhow and the charm we we do believe that everyone can be developed everyone can be developed as an excellent teacher you know so normally uh, every students can be taught every students can be developed uh, that's the attitude the people genuinely you know genuinely in the class you know all students you know will not be excellent definitely but this is about attitude you know this is about attitude people tend to change most of the time so they cannot be trusted genuinely according to experiences this is right this may be right even as as far as my personal experiences are concerned you know i can agree with this people tend to change most of the time so they cannot be trusted here but anyway then if i agree with this that then it damages the my attitude attitude is a psychological thing that affects your actions that affects uh, research seriously so therefore they do not damage the attitude because we are supposed to achieve the success and also the progress of success so therefore the uh, ideal reply should be strongly disagree at least here at least here i hate people generally strongly disagree you know while hating people you know how can you develop a positive attitude towards people and how can you negotiate successfully with people you know if you hate people then i wish i could live in a place where no humans are if i uh, you know translate this into singhala minisu nadi thanage jeevat thende tibuna na kochcha rohana de sometimes you might you know have this type of wish indicating that you have wrong attitude about people but as a as a, you know as a person in a charge as a manager in a charge we should not have you know uh, this type of wish that was strongly decided strongly decided so therefore you can see in the note you know i have given in fact the uh, ideal responses then your interpretation i hope you know you are here at least you must be here genuinely here as far as i am concerned of course i am here maybe 47 my marks 47 something so i am here right uh, then uh, good attitude you know good attitude about negotiation then we can use this uh, questionnaire to measure whether you have good attitude about negotiation our time is limited anyway shall we do this one also negotiation is about earning profit so it is not a thing that we should value so if you strongly agree that indicates that you don't have good attitude so therefore strongly disagree negotiation is about earning profits uh, that may be true you know in a really a commercialized situation it should be true negotiation is about earning profit but anyway the second one the second sentence you know so it, it is not a thing that we should value no it is a thing that we should value earning profits is not an uh, ugly thing earning reasonable profits is not a sin right why you know i can discuss even i can take hours and you know at least one hour to discuss why we should earn profits but i hope that you are an advanced student you know several valid reasons all right then negotiation is commercial yes of course hence it does not match with my life goals strongly agree indicating bad attitude so therefore strongly disagree if you want to have 
very good attitude about negotiation, then the ideal answer should be strongly decided. The negotiation is about complete, complete management. Strongly agree. Lifeblood of all businesses is negotiating. Maybe not, but anyway, this is about negotiation. Attitude. Attitude towards negotiation. Lifeblood of all businesses is negotiating. There may be other activities, you know, other than negotiation. But anyway, if you, like, if you think like this, that indicates the strongness, you know, uh, of your attitude towards negotiation. A negotiator is to be a driver, not a passenger. So I can't be a driver. Strongly disagree. Negotiation is something that everyone has to do frequently. Strongly agree. Negotiation is a more challenging task. So I should avoid it. Strongly disagree. You should not avoid. It is inevitable. It is you know, an integral part of the manager's life. Negotiation. You can't escape, escape from that. You will never become a successful manager. Even relating to personal life, many times you have to negotiate. Perhaps every week you have to negotiate with people in your personal life. The negotiation is a game. game. So I should win always by defeating the other party. Uh, this is a tricky, you know, uh, you know difficult uh, statement. Negotiation is a game. So I should win always by defeating the other party. The answer is uncertain, ideally. You know, that, that means definitely we can't say, you, know, uh, you should be here, strongly, strongly disagree, or strongly agree. So in my case, is my answer is here, indifferent. Negotiation is a game. So I should win. But anyway, if you, you know, if you, if you have to involve in various, you know, what you call uh, distributive negotiations, which I will come to later, then of course you have to defeat others. In order to be a winner, you have to defeat others. Then, uh, you know, uh, the ideal answer is then should be here. I should not negotiate as I may have to lose something important. Strongly disagree. One can get what he or she wants to be tough, aggressive, and forceful. Of course, in negotiation, sometimes you have to do, you have to be tough, you have to be aggressive, you have to be forceful to win. And I am not a right sort of person for this. I strongly disagree. Towards uh, a very good attitude, you know, towards, towards developing a very good attitude about negotiation. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> if, if I do scoring, you know, so this one, you, go, you, you have, you know, the, the, the procedure also here you got. So therefore you can do that. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> any questions? Any questions about two exercises? Two, what do you call the two measurements? Sapat? Other? No, sir, no. No. Right, okay. Because it is clear, no, in from the note you can, yes. Uh, right. Then key concepts of negotiation. There are four, uh, my memory is correct, yes. Ah, yes, there are four. There are four concepts, you know. You should learn, you, you must have a good understanding about the right meaning of these four concepts. First one is Vatna, best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Then RP, that is reservation price. Then so far, uh, zone of possible agreement. Then VCT, Value creation to trades. Okay, then what is Batna? 
So indeed, indeed, you know, this is a concept developed by Professor Roger Fisher and William Murray in 1991. So then according to Johnson and Locke, uh, your BATNA is your preferred course of action. Preferred course of action. In the absence of an agreement, it is not, remember, you know, it is not essential to engage in uh, negotiation. Without doing negotiation also, you may be able to settle the problem. If you are a very strong person, mostly you don't need to do negotiation. You can take the decision and force it to implement. Force others to implement. That is possible. There are many examples in reality. Without doing any negotiation. because you are so powerful that you can make decisions without having a single discussion with anyone. That is possible. But anyway, uh, so therefore, you know, therefore, even if you, if you, if you do, uh, if you do uh, engaging in negotiation, then what is Batna, that is the best case scenario that is available to you if you cannot reach agreement. In the negotiation at the land, at hand, at hand. Assume you have a land problem with the neighbor. You have a land problem. And then you know you have to have a, a negotiation to have a settlement between you and the neighbor. So otherwise, you know, okay, then the best alternative, the batna, maybe uh, the, the, the decisions that you can get if you go to the court, if you go to the court. That may be the button. So your button is basically the best possible outcome you can get if you negotiate with someone else or go to court if everything goes to your favor. So this is an example. This is an example. Your CEO wants you to train all the production supervisors in respect of human relations. 25 production supervisors are there. You have decided to contact the nearest government university excelling in management education. The relevant chairman of the board of management studies is ready, ready to offer a tailor-made program and the total fees negotiation. What is tailor-made program? Exclusively developed program for you, for, for, for training all your you know, 25 production supervisors. Then there's another university, namely Management City University, located in 25 kilometers away, specializing in management studies and commerce. And then that offers an advanced certificate in human relations. So yeah, the charge is 50,000 from a candidate. Also, it offers a 10% discount to an organization that sends uh, 10 candidates to follow the course. And 20% for 20 or more candidates. Okay, then what is the button in this scenario or in this vignette? What is your button? Of course, I have, I think I have given the answer, you know. So it, it's easy for you to do self-learning. So in this case, the button is to send the supervisors to follow the course offered by the management city, you know. In fact, that, that's, that's the other alternative, you know. It's valuing, it's valuing rupee terms, one million. Or uh, 10 lakhs, 10 lakhs. So you can see how you know it comes. Then sending the supervisors to this university has two disadvantages of course. The trainees have to travel for 25 kilometers. And also they have to spend time and energy to meet the assessment refund. So there are assessments. Then assume that the both universities offer the same in terms of curricula and their content. So assumption is there, right? Okay, then uh, reservation price easy to understand, you know, easy to understand. That is your is if you are the negotiator, that is your walk away point. That is your res uh, resistant point. So assume you know you are the you are the seller. No, let, let, let us say I am the seller. You are the buyer. I am selling my old car. Then you want to buy that car from me that car from, uh, car from me, then at least, you know, I need, assume I need at least 100 for that car. Uh, that is my 
walk away point or resistance point. If you offer a price which is you know lower than hundred, definitely I will stop negotiation and I walk away. Now that is resistance point. So as long as your price is higher than hundred, then I will be in the negotiation. If I am not that powerful, uh, then your, your price will come to hundred, and then unwillingly, you know, not unwillingly, not with higher level of happiness, I will have to accept that. At least I expect that. Uh, that's why walk away point or resistance point. Okay, then so far you can understand uh, with my example. It is a range, you know, it is a range or area where, you know, both parties, you know, can have a deal, can have a deal successfully. Then making both parties satisfied. You know, there is, uh, if there is no so far, uh, then there is bargaining impasse. You know, bargaining impasse. That means, very, you know, it is, it is, I mean, it is not possible to have an agreement. If there is bargaining impasse or negotiation impasse, that means there's no so far. There is no so far. So in order to have a so far, there must be an overlapping. There must be an overlapping in the ranges where the both parties could reach agreement. But if there is, sorry, the, the, no, there should be an overlap, yes. But if there is no overlapping, then there will be no so far. Okay, look at this example. Here the buyer's reservation price. Assume building a, okay, purchasing a, a house. Purchasing a newly built house. Buyer's reservation price. Residential house here. Buyer's reservation price is 30 lakhs. Then the seller's reservation price is 27 lakhs and 50,000. At least the seller expects this much. Normally, you know that, uh, you know, if possible, buyers, normally buyer, buyer's behavior is to minimize the price. Seller's behavior is to maximize the price. Then both parties, you know, engage in uh, different processes. Maximizing and minimizing, contradictory. So therefore, they have to come to, you know, they have to come to a certain overlapping. In order to have an agreement, right? So the uh, so if buyer okay, if seller's price like okay, buyer's reservation for purchase right, the very level right. So then, if the buyer's reservation price assumed, buyer's reservation price assumed uh, 20, 27 lakhs, uh, then there is no so far because it is lower than the seller's reservation price. Then to have the sofa, yes, any patient, yes, is someone wanting to have a question, right? Okay, uh, then the seller's, uh, okay, uh, if buyer's uh, price is lower than seller's reservation price, buyer's price, you know, then there's no sofa, there is no buyer's reservation price. There's no possibility to have an agreement. So therefore, remember it is, you know, it is always, uh, uh, there should be, a, you know, there should be a condition always, that is that the seller's reservation price should be lower than the buyer's reservation price. Okay, then uh, this is an example, I think uh, we will save time. Then, uh, Value creation through trade. When each part in the negotiation obtains something more valuable by giving something else less valuable. Value creation through trade zockers. So therefore, both parties must be competent to create something valuable, but it is usually less valuable than the major subject of negotiation. The value of the subject of negotiation. That's the main thing. So it is more likely that collaborative bargaining, you know, the collaborate from collaborative bargaining, we can create, uh, we can have this one, create new values to both parties through distributive bargaining. In other words, uh, 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 
uh, competitive bargaining, we can't achieve this one. Only cooperative bargaining, we can achieve. Or integrative bargaining, that is an alternative term to uh, collaborative bargaining. We will discuss after this. Right, so this is an example. Read the following minute. Is there a VCT? Suranga, the managing director, is negotiated starting salary with Prabhat you know, during an interview. You know. Prabhat is a graduate in a chair from a reputable university, very reputable, who is currently working as a senior chair executive with an excellent performance and recommendation records in AB firm. From the interview, too, he became the best performer with a prediction of very high potential. Suranga offers uh, 80,000 as the starting salary. But Prabhat, you know, Prabhat does not accept this by insisting uh, rupees so much, uh, yes, one lakh. As the discussion continues, Prabhat mentioned that he wants to read for a master's degree in business administration. A further discussion reveals that he needs uh, two lakhs, about a half of the MBA fee, as in the total fee is four lakhs, then to finance his reading for an MBA from a reputable university. Suranga realizes that if his company paid the participation partial tuition fee, ah, the company would be getting a save on payroll taxes by paying the tuition instead of the salary, higher, higher salary. I assume, you know, this is so according to government regulations, tax regulations. Then he proposes, if we pay the half of your MBA tuition fee, do you like to accept 80,000 as you start in salary and work for us at least for three years? Prabhat decide to accept the proposal happy. You see value creation through trade. Something less valuable, but still valuable. Right. Uh, distributive negotiation. Now the, okay, then having learned those four concepts, uh, now, shall we come to uh, two types, uh, two major types of negotiation? One is distributive negotiation, the other one is uh, cooperative or integrative negotiation. So, what is this distributive negotiation? It's a type of negotiation in which uh, relevant parties compete over the distribution of a fixed sum of value, you know, fixed sum of value here. With the intention of, with the intention of gaining as much as possible, each of relevant parties attempts to obtain the biggest slice of the pie, which is fixed. Okay, let me for for easiness, you know, let me use this figure. Then it's easy, even though I have uh, put uh, after finishing all these uh, characteristics and all this. So let me go to this one. This one. Distributive negotiation. Look at a serious look at these two figures. Figure 8.3 and then figure 8.4. Then uh, figure-wise, you will be able to understand the differences between the two types. So here you can see there are two negotiators. You know, So each is at the opposite side of the table. Opposite side of the table. Each attempts to divide a fixed file. This is, assume this is the fixed file. For example, assume, uh, you know, you want to buy a residential house. They assume I am the seller of that. I am the seller of that. My price is 100. You know, my, my, my reservation price is 100. So, no, assume, assume my first offer, my first, first offer, reservation price, all this was right for, but my first op offer, I assume, but you have first offer. No, 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 no. I can't buy uh, the, the house for 100. Then you, you are responding like that. Then my offer is uh, 75. My offer is 75. Then you are here. 75. Then I am here. 100. And then the balance, you know, the balance is what is this? The, the gap is 25. And that is the fixed. You know, so then these people have to dance, you know, these people have to engage in bargaining. 
then depending on the strength bargaining power you know the the person who has more power is going to be the winner the person who has less power is going to be the loser if i am more powerful than you then i am going to be the winner then i will tell you no 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 then uh, my price is okay initially i offered 100 but my price is uh, 92 and then i say anyhow you know you badly need this house and then you uh, decide to pay 91 or 92 then i am the winner but indeed you wanted to have that say say uh, the amount uh, 80 but you had to pay uh, 91 then i am the winner you are the loser so then uh, you know assume there is a cake you know this cake you know this cake is fixed the everyone you know the everyone tries to get the highest slice of the cake highest slice of the cake so depending in of the bargaining power you know one is going to be the winner at the expense of the other okay so then there is competition there is competition definitely each claims value but here uh integrative negotiation or cooperative negotiation cooperation is there both parties are at the same side of the table both parties attempt to expand the pie that's why you know this dotted you know round you can see circle expanding if possible you know that's why value creation both create value in addition to claiming it then both parties are going to be winner because there will be mutual gain so remember that under integrative negotiation there will be a mutual gain under a uh, distributive negotiation there is no mutual gain then the differences further you can see you know exhibit 8.1 that presents a comparison between distributive negotiation and integrative negotiation several factors under several factors you get objective then you can see you know the this under distributive negotiation to get the biggest slice of the pie but here to create value by expanding the pie then the role being the driver not the passenger if you are the negotiator in the distributive negotiation you want to be the driver not the passenger but here being the disturbance hand not an aggressive competitor disturbance hand because both want to be you know if you are the one party and i am the other party you also you know expects my win you expect my winning i expect you are winning you let me win i let you win okay so then that's why outcome here win lose solution but here win win solution the satisfaction of the negotiator mostly one party becomes satisfied at the expense of the other satisfaction then both parties become satisfied or into mutual gains then the focus positions you know proposals first proposal second proposal third one like you know until we have a solution that's called there is a dancing you know there is a pro- there's a process of dancing under under integrative negotiation So there are different proposals coming from the buyer and also coming from the seller. The interest of the both parties here, the focus, interest, their expectations, their information sharing here, low, not disclosing any significant information, especially reservation price, frustration, objectives of the you know seller or the buyer, they are not revealed. only minimum needed information is change is exchange but here high you know revealing interest feeling etc to find ways to satisfy interests of each party you know if the negotiation you are one party then i am the other party then you know i want to know your interest your frustration your expectations so that you know i will think of developing a solution that will make you happy while making me also happy you also want to you know know my interest my reservation price so like these things then creativity minimum creativity needed here high to find solution to create value you know 
because here the value creation through trade is expected expanding the pie for that you know there must be creativity which is not an easy thing then the relationship often unfavorable short term and uncooperative but he always favorable long term and cooperative you know you see you know this is not uh, favorable this is favorable in terms of relationships which are good right so normally relationship among the stakeholders i expect in nowadays you have learned that symbiosis not zero sum perspective you can remember i hope otherwise please learn i have taught already right so the in the these are you know you can see these are the characteristics you know probability of uh, what is this management of uh, predictability predictability of distributed negotiation and management of expectations dancing you know dancing predicting step 1 predictable step 1 2 3 you know as you can understand you are the buyer i assume i am the seller my first price you know say 100 then you say no sorry i can't buy you know then you offer 70 then i say no no how come can i take so can i sell for 7 70 you know uh, you know then i will give you know this is these are the features and all these things then i will offer for the second time my second proposal uh, 97 then you say no then your second proposal is say uh, 75 then for the third one i say no 80 then you will say as uh, 78 then no and ultimately assume uh, okay 77 i accept and then there was the dancing okay then uh, <clears throat> claiming the bigger slice and all this in the driver coming into positional negotiators must make concession in order to reach agreement you know so what is a concession concession is a change in one negotiator position with the intention of indus inducing the other negotiator to change his or her position so i assume you know, i will change okay so your first offer is uh 70 then i say no 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 so okay price is this you know this uh, residential house has these these features uh, therefore then okay then give me uh 95 i know so that means you know so i i made a concession deduction from 100 to 95 so you also have to make a concession that means from 70 to maybe 75 your second proposal okay then uh, <clears throat> right then what is what do you mean by this one there is a pattern to the timing and size of concession timing and you know there is a pattern to the timing and size of concession okay let me give an example like this so you are the buyer i am the seller i am the seller so this is about you know the, the subject of negotiation is a used car used car okay used car uh then okay you are okay then i give my first offer uh, that is 100 the price of the used car is 100 then you give your first offer uh, that is 70 that is 70 that is 70 so then uh timing okay let us take this one first time time then i will take sometimes you know at once you know after after getting your response as 70 at once i tell as you i tell okay give me 95 uh, that is one situation assume the second situation no no i don't give you know i take time i take time then i go to inside of my you know the selling office then maybe i pretend or maybe genuinely i take a call then i uh, i take a call then after 10 minutes you know i will ask you know before going to my office i will tell you okay please uh, you know wait uh, for 10 minutes so i will give you my next uh, price then i will, you know so i go to the office and then uh, get a call 
and then after 10 minutes i will come and then i will say right okay uh, because i want you to take this uh, car so then you may 95 you may 90 then timing is different you know in first situation at what in the second situation after 10 after 10 minutes then i assume you say okay no 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 uh, i can uh, okay i can pay right i can pay uh, 80 i can pay 80 right then i say no 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 then uh, wait 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 for another 10 minutes you know i want to make some calculation genuinely and then i want to give a call to my boss and then i want to get permission from my boss so like all these things you know so I assume i deal with and then after 10 minutes i offer right okay give me 90 not 80 i can't but 90 are uh, you see then the timing so then uh, you know uh <clears throat> greater time what you call here yes here a longer time look at here right the concession that is given after taking a long time relatively gives a signal what is that what is the signal less flexibility less flexibility okay less flexibility so that means you know i am more powerful as the as the buyer sorry as the seller you are less powerful as the buyer but a quick concession signals availability of additional concession quick at once if i say uh 95 or then 90 then you think ah no, no, no. So, you know uh you then you 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 predict i can get more and more because my responses are quick you know the, the these things were found according to research you know uh, even though i have not mentioned the research uh, researcher names and all these then greater size what is this then the size of concession greater size signals more flexibility while a smaller size signals less flexibility what is this can you understand this one greater size signals more flexibility while a smaller size signals less flexibility we're going to take the same example same example you are the buyer i am the seller the subject of negotiation is the is an all car you're right so then my first offer is 100 then my second offer is uh, 95 95 so assume my second that is first situation the second situation my second offer is 99 then in the first situation my third offer is 90 but uh, in the second situation my third offer is 98 understood 90 from 100 to 99 then 98 then 99 so that means you know size of concession is lower relative but you know in the other situation right from 100 to 95 then from 95 to 90 the difference is five the concession and that is greater you know greater size then great, greater size signals more flexibility okay right so then if you know these things then you can you know you can predict you know you can uh, you can you know this is a good knowledge then you can uh, develop a skill in winning in the negotiation by using this knowledge right then the end point is likely to be the middle point between the first two reasonable offers if your offer is reasonable and if my offer is reasonable so normally in the middle you know the end point that is the bar you know that is the point where both negotiators you know reach an agreement at that point according to research is usually the middle point between the two uh, uh between the first two reasonable offers so if you take our same example your your first offer is 70 my first offer is 100 assume both are reasonable offers and then maybe the middle point what is the middle point 75 well, for <clears throat> yes for easiness assume your offer is 50 my offer is 100 and then the middle point is 75 
then at the 75, uh, we can expect the agreement reached. But then the negotiator is doing, you know, short cutting, short circuiting, you know, at her own risk, you know. So according to research studies, you know, doing short cut is not a good thing in negotiation. So it will lead to more frustration. Then so avoid short circuiting the dots. Go it systematically. Right. So then uh, look at this uh, negotiation process. So this is our window. The, the union of AB firm tries to negotiate for the best possible wage increase. It has a resistance point of 2,000 increase per month. A target of 2,500 and an initial demand of 4,300. The management expects to offer uh, rupees 1,500, but as a target of 2,100. And the resistance point is uh, 2,400. So then there's a positive settlement range, and it is between 2,000 and uh, 2,400. So then the situation is depicted in this figure, the figure 8.2, distributive negotiation process. So here we have the management. Here we have the this side, right, uh, my right side, uh, the trade union. My left side, the management. Then the management initial uh, point. That is uh, initial, you know, uh, offering. Offering uh, point. Not the, <clears throat> no, 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 I'm sorry. This side, this side indeed, yes, this side, the trade union side, this side, management side. Then here the initial demand point. Trade union, you know, initially wants to get 4,300. Then they are, genuinely they expect this, 2000, to get 2,500. You know, because they expect 2,500, they ask for 4,300. Because there is a dancing, this is a negotiation. This is a negotiation. Then the resistance point, so minimum they expect 2,000. So then uh, lower than 2,000, they don't expect, then they, then they stop negotiating. And here the management side, then, so in the management side here, this should be the resistance you know, point and then target point, initial, you know, initial offer point. Initial offer point, this one. Initial offer offer point, right? This one is initial demand point. Initial demand point. Right, so then the, uh, so then you can see here the positive settlement ring. Positive settlement target point, this one, the management, Generally expects to pay 2,100. But uh, over 1,500, the management is not ready to pay. So if still, you know, the trade union insists, uh, then the management will stop. Right. Okay, then. Uh, so in fact, in reality, the more powerful party will be the winner. And distributive negotiation, right? So then, some recommendations for achieving success in uh, distribution negotiation. The first one to use the magnetic mag magnetic pull effect of the opening offer. Assume I am the seller. Uh, I am the seller of selling, you know, all cars. Then you know, if I follow this recommendation. My, you know, I, I, I will be very careful about my first offer, my first, you know, uh, offer. Because, you know, my, my the, 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 what is called, the, uh, my, my gain, you know, will depend on, my profit will depend on that first offer. Usually, if the first offer is very high, then I will be able to get 
high profit. If the first offer is low, very low, then I will be, you know, I will have to take low profit. So according to research, that has been found out. Okay, so then, uh, <clears throat> you know, these uh, Gasco and Robinson suggest that, you know, if you are in a position of leverage or have readily available alternative to reaching a deal in the negotiation, you may wish to make the opening offer due to its power to influence the other negotiators' expectation, you know. So that is an answer for this question. Who should give the first offer? So if you think that you are more powerful as the seller, then you give the first offer. As the buyer, if you think that you are the more powerful, you are the more powerful person, then give the first uh, demanding offer, initial demand point, give that. Okay, so because the, the first offer, you know, is going to be a strong psychological anchor point. Strong psychological anchor point. Right. Second recommendation to word the opening offer appropriately. You know, what should be the opening offer? It should not be too much normal. Don't be too greedy. There are examples, you know, actual examples, you know, uh, in which, you know, uh, people, you know, negotiated became uh, losers because of being too greedy. But for, you know, because of the time limitations, I can't give them. All the things, you know, I have not written also. This is a formalized chapter or everything. No need to give. For, for, for writing a chapter also, there is a limitation. Uh, with regard to pages. Right. Then uh, you should not, your claim, you know, value should not be too greedy, right? So normally like, you know, a firmly word, if your first offer is reasonable, we, we suggest to be reasonable. So then uh, firmly word, if your first offer is reasonable, then use firm language, indicating firmness and less flexibility. That means your second offer, second proposal, third proposal, you know, with regard to them, there should be less flexibility. This is my offer, which is genuinely reasonable. It is not possible to sell less than this price. This is my best offer. And of course, it is fair life. You can say reason one, reason two, reason three. So based on these reasons, this is my best offer. And, you know, I believe that this is fair to life price. You know, you can be firm. Right. So then uh, if the, if the, uh, you know, if the first offer is an extreme one, I assume you are not too greedy, but to somewhat you are greedy. And then it is going to be an extreme one. Then you know uh, you sh you can you can word like this by using soft language. What do you think about the price of hundred? So I assume genuinely uh, your price is uh, seventy something. But you are not too greedy. But you are to some to a certain extent you are greedy. So then uh, you you try whether you can get a higher profit. What do you think about price? Then my boss believes in the offer of life. You, know, you take the boss to the scenario. According to the information available, available to me, I would like to offer it. Right. Then uh, not to disclose any significant information about you because this is distributive. This is competitive. You want to be the winner. So therefore your interest, profit, desperations, all these point of walking away, they are not to be, you know, uh, disclosed. Then to know about the other party as much as possible. Because you are, you are going to be the winner. You want to be the winner. You are the driver. You don't want to be the passenger. You, of course, you, you try to make the other person become a passenger. Then become a loser. So therefore, if possible, you can try to, you know, you, you try you can try to know the, uh, the, the other party's reservation fact, the, the power, the alternatives available to other party. You know, after doing that type of study, and then if you can understand that there is no any other alternative other than your selling, uh, then you can be more powerful. 
use of anchoring to close details ah that's another interesting uh recommendation what is this anchoring you know it's a principles of psychology in which the negotiator encourages the other negotiator to be less risk tolerant to be less risk risk tolerant and accept a final offer by characterizing characterizing it the final offer as a gain rather than a loss as a gain rather than a loss so you can say right this is the you know this is the this is the last offer and then you know you see you know this is indeed a gain this is not a you know loss to you, you know, so then uh, to be less risk tolerant that means further dancing for further changing you know proposal so you you should convince the other party you know that is dangerous that is more dangerous okay use of anchoring to cross deal and then use of the good cop and bad cop routine that's another strategy this is called uh, this is considered as a distributive bargaining tactic it means having two negotiators on behalf of you if you are you know so you are the negotiator two negotiators so then one person you know one person is a good cop that means you know he is a person of human relations then he is more sympathetic empathetic you know he shows the or she shows the sympathy to the other party empathy to the other party uses soft language but back co you know uh, is aggressive is uh, you know uh, uh, bad cop you know uses a language which is insulting the other part which is you know uh, rude which is rude this is a tactic you know this is a tactic usually the bad cop starts you know so assume i am the negotiator you are the other party so then i use two people on you know on behalf of me one is good cop the other one is bad cop first you know bad cook talks using you know bad language you know aggressive and all these so assume i offer okay bad bad cook you know so assume uh, you know, i have given the price 100 then bad cook reveals you know my boss you know my boss wants me to reveal his first offer for this selling other is 100 so assume you as the buyer no 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 it is too expensive and then you offer Say uh, you know sixty, sixty. Then of course, then I will talk like this. How ridiculous, you know? This is a business, you know. This is not a charity. Fund. You know, are you making a job? So something like you know, uh, don't don't insult us. You know, we came here, you know, by we have many alternatives. Our time is uh, expensive. So something like you know. Then the good cop comes, you know. Uh, good cop comes to control the bad cop. Starts controlling the bad cop. No, 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 don't talk like that. You know, these are buyer. You know, buyers are very important. You know, because of them, we, you know, we do the business. Without them, we can't do. So then you apologize. You know, I mean, not not you. The good cop. You know, good cop will engage in apologizing to you, and then using soft language, and then psychologically, you know, you will have a contact with the good cop. Then you will tend to deal with the good cop, and then uh, you will tend to agree with the good cop. So in that way, by using the good cop, then and the bad cop, you know, we will be able to get winning. Right? Okay. Then let us do an exercise. To make you understand further. So let us take uh, the my memory is correct the last one last activity yes this one activity seven let us take a break also then you know, activity seven let us take five minute breaks five minute yeah the break of five minutes and then with yes
Ok, then, <clears throat> right. Salutation. Are you all right? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, activity seven. A large toy manufacturing firm, right? All this, uh, with 20, 2,500 employees, has to negotiate with its labor union or demand to raise production employees' basic wage by uh, 4,000 rupees per month. Union justification is that there had not been any wage increase in seven years and they can't face high rate of inflation. So it has uh, found that some other companies have increased their wages paid to similar employees. Hence, union strongly needs a wage increase. Management of the firm wishes to continue paying the same wage and all this. Its justification is that competition coming from multinational companies. And also the other companies, very severe. And therefore, the increasing wage will uh, result in increase in production cost of toys and then increasing its selling price, which most likely reduces the demand. And then the profit of the firm. Hence, the management you know, has no consent to increase the wage. Okay, then my first question is, can the firm refuse to demand and continue as usual? Why? Can the firm refuse the demand and continue as usual? Why? Of course, cannot. Cannot. Then why? <clears throat> Why? Yes? Why, why? There are, there are, there are, there are three reasons at least, you know. Reasons have been given here. One is, they had, you know, there had not been any wage increase in seven years. Then reason two, higher rate of inflation. Then reason three, strong uh, need of the union. And also even we can add another reason, you know, several firms, competitive firms have already paid, already increased their salaries to these employees, similar employees. So therefore, because of these four reasons, the firm cannot refuse the demand and continue as usual. Of course, firm can, you know, if the firm is very adamant, the firm can do that, but if it, most likely there will be a strike. There will be uh, a big complaint. Right then, assume, uh, assume uh, after many moves back and forth over the course of three days, the management agrees to make one final offer to increase wage by two thousand rupees per month. However. The union counters at 3,000. Then how to, how to, the union still is demanding 3,000. The management is offering, okay, uh, has decided to offer 2,000. Then how to proceed to reach an agreement? How to proceed to reach an agreement? Here is there an agreement? There's no agreement. There is no agreement. Here, there is now the, there is a, a, a fixed pipe that is a thousand. Then this uh, thousand uh, fixed pipe has to be, you know, has uh, has to be uh, claimed. I mean, they are they are they are they, they are trying to get the highest of the fixed pipe. That is uh, the fixed pipe, P I E. That is a uh, thousand thousand rupees. Then how to proceed to reach an agreement? You know, competitive negotiation is a position. A position is a special proposal stated by a negotiator to reach an agreement. You know that. I have mentioned you know, under characteristics of uh, integrative, sorry, uh, distributive negotiation. The negotiators must make concessions to reach an agreement. Without making concessions to reach an agreement, there won't be. 
there will not be so a concession you know i mentioned I, a concession is a change in one negotiator's position with the intention of induce, inducing the other part that the other negotiator to change his or her position therefore here the the union has to change also the management has to change perhaps the management has to start changing the union's position by giving a further concession maybe 2200 something right okay then assume the management makes only one more move in dancing to increase wage by 2400 rupees it says it cannot afford more than that is it possible to reach an agreement or not why again not possible you know not possible as the union demand is 3000 it is not possible until the union agrees with uh, 2400 there will not be an agreement there will be not be an agreement so therefore further concessions are needed further concessions sani on the part of the management also you know uh, on the part of the trade union i then assume that the management got the final offer of uh, 2700 rupees union has changed okay from 3000 to 2700 and then it raises its final offer in the following way the management raises its final offer in the following way so far we have been trying to find the rate of wage increase by spending a lot of time energy and also some money we have come a long way but it is not possible for us to pay uh, 2700 rupees hence our best and last offer is 2400 rupees that is uh, 3000 you know less than you want not 3000 300 less than you want but this is our last sentence 2400 is the best we can offer okay the sum of uh, rupees 2400 is the best we can offer yes and how do you evaluate the price by the management can you rephrase in order to use the concept of anchoring how and how the concept of anchoring testing your knowledge of concept of anchoring and also practically you not know, testing whether you can use it you can apply to this case this uh, yes this uh, what do you call this skill builder what i have named you know the skill builder right so how do you evaluate the uh, price by the management of course you have to you know you you should uh, you know uh, refresh your knowledge of the concept of anchoring you know under anchoring the concept of anchoring anchoring the negotiator encourages the other negotiator to be less risk tolerant can you remember less risk tolerant and also accept the final offer proposal you know by doing uh, what you call by by characterizing here characterizing the final offer as a gain rather than loss so we have to characterize the management has to characterize its final offer as a gain to the you know union not as a loss to the union if you characterize it as a loss to the union uh, that is not the use of the concept of anchor concept of anchor so this phrase you know the the, the management phrase of course is perceived you know perceived you know as a uh, as a as a loss to the union so therefore you know we have to develop a statement which is not perceived as a loss which is perceived as a, as a gain which is perceived 
uh, not as you know ultimatum which is also tactic you know what is this ultimatum ultimatum you know final locker we will give this one this is the final after this we on this not talk finish you accept that or then you know we will finish something like that is also not good you know because you know we have to maintain a good relationship with trade unions especially in case of an organization which is unionized it is essential to have a good relationship between the trade union and the management so that is called favorable labor relation favorable labor relation therefore something like you know let me let me phrase like this uh so far you know we have been we have been working cooperatively for seven years we have been working cooperatively without any grievance coming from you uh, of course uh, we 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 can understand that uh, your 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 demand to increase the salary is reasonable is reasonable we can understand that we do understand that's why we got together and then we you know started thinking of a new salary increase new salary increase so by considering the cost and other things you know this is uh, you know we can offer uh, we can offer uh, 2400 so in fact you know we wanted to we wanted to give initially initially we wanted to give nothing but later after desire after listening to you in fact generally we wanted to pay something that is uh, that is uh, uh, uh 1500 you can say 1500 or even 2000 you can say 2000 but now you know we decided to offer 2400 2400 so it is a gain to you it is a gain to you uh, that uh you know, i can consider you know as a phrase that we involve using the concept of anchoring the something you know more than what we want to give rather less than you know less than what we want you know i mean you know as a gain so the trade union wants to win the trade union people also you know they have political objectives so right okay then uh, any questions regarding this any question no sir no question right okay then shall we go to next one the distributive our time is going uh distributive not uh, we have finished now distributive negotiation then uh we are towards uh, integrative negotiation right we okay here here we have not not here right this one right integrative negotiation so already the basic things you know uh, characteristics all we have discussed then the what is this one there is a theory that aggressive competition gives rise to aggressive resistance so i have mentioned this example you know form your fingers into a fist extend it pointing upward you know about 1 foot from your face and ask another to try to open your fist what happens the more aggressively the force is applied by the other person your friend to open your fist the more you know pressure you give you apply you know imply in that the aggressive competition gives rise to aggressive resistance therefore research has found out that there is a better approach for negotiation in order to get win win negotiate win win solution in order to get a mutual gain so that's why this uh, come you know cooperative negotiation came these are the characteristics creating value and claiming it integrative negotiating is creative of course using brainstorming or other techniques you know we have to find out a solution that will give a win win uh, solution to the both parties creating a win win solution is not an easy thing people have to think people have to be innovative and the negotiators 
you know, must understand each other's interests and problems in order to reach agreement. So here, you know, it reminds me about that iceberg concept, you know, iceberg concept. Regarding an iceberg, you know, uh, there's, there is a part which is not seen to you. Only one part is seen to you in the sea, you know, an iceberg. So then the part that is not seen to you, you know, has uh, you know, various, you know, I mean, uh, expectations, frustrations, reservation prices of the parties involved in the negotiation. Then there is an attempt to expand pi of value. Okay, then some recommendations to use the language appropriately because here, you know, we consider relationships. We want to have relationship with the other party. We want to maintain it until we do the business. Customers are a key stakeholder. So therefore, we should, you know, we should lose, we should use the language appropriately. One recommendation here is, you know, uh, thanks to Professor Fisher and Urai, you know, be soft on people and hard on issues. Be soft on the people and hard on the issues. Regarding the subject matters of the negotiation, terms and conditions, you should be hard. But when we talk to people, when we are addressed to people, when we disturb the people, you know, in the, con in, in the negotiation, you know, we have to respect them. We have to value them. So therefore, be soft on people. Then to engage in communication in order to provide significant information about needs and interests of the parties. Okay, so then to use communication techniques, you know, in order to know the uh, hidden, hidden, you know, interest of the people. This is called the going, going below the line, you know, going below the line. So if you take that iceberg concept, you know, there's a line or surface in the sea, and then you have to go below, you know, below the line. By going below the line, uh, through the use of you know, communication techniques, such as intense listening, speaking, and questioning to build trust and rapport. When you can pronounce this rapport, uh, original pronouncing is rapport. Uh, letter T is silent. Okay, then, uh, then you know, so, right, to reveal additional capabilities or resources if any, because we want to create value, expand the pipe, the fixed pipe, then to use what parties have learned about each other to find creative options with potential for mutual gain. A technique like brainstorm, technique like thinking out of the box. I wish I could have, you know, time to give an example under brainstorm and also under thinking out of the box. I have several examples, but because this is online teaching and also time limitation, maybe you must have gone to some examples of brainstorming and thinking out of the box during other courses. Then to bargain in teams also, because normally we believe that uh, two heads are Two heads, you know, which are right, uh, are better than one head. Okay, then read the following vignette. Is there a win-win solution? Chairman of the interview board. Okay, now let us discuss about your salary. How much do you expect? Then the candidate, my current salary as the HR manager is two lakhs per month. So I expect at least uh, two lakhs and forty thousand. The chairman, don't you think it is too much? What about 10% increase to your current salary? We can offer 220000 Then the candidate responses like this. I don't think it is fair because I have to come to your organization by driving for a higher number of kilometers, about 10 additional kilometers from my current workplace. My move, my move to a new organization should have a salary increase, increment. Otherwise, no point of changing the current workplace, which is okay now to me. So therefore, remember, you know, current workplace is okay too. So even as a bargaining strategy, so if you are the candidate, you should never tell, you know, in front, you know, at an examination to get, sorry, at, at an interview to get another job from another organization, never tell that, you know, I'm dissatisfied with my current job 
and my current employee is bad, very bad. They are doing very unethical things. Never tell like that. You know, then what, what will happen is the employer will be more powerful. This, uh, this new, new, new organization will be more powerful. You know, you will be less powerful at the interview. And that is not good for you, you know, for successful negotiating of a matter like this. Then chairman, okay, let us be fair and realistic. Working in our organization is more prestigious than working in your current organization. Because of the reason that our company is one of the best companies, one of the best companies in the industry and has won many awards for excellence. Another point is that working with us will give you more exposure to new areas of HR, such as HR scorecard and measurement, dealing with trade union and working with peers who are excellent professionals in their respective fields. You know? So these are the additional, you know, these are the advantages. So these are missing from the uh, current organization where the candidate is working. So therefore, the you know, chairman is pointing, pointing out there. You know, that means increasing the bargaining power of chairman. Also, we expect to expand the HR department in future and create a you know, post call HR director, you know, revealing expectations because this is integrative bargaining, cooperative bargaining. Therefore, each party has to reveal you know, uh, his or her uh, hidden interest, expectations, so that, you know, both parties can have a better solution. So, so then it's a call, it's a direct, and if you prove that you can excel here, it is likely that you can reach that post. Considering all, I offer you 2 lakhs and 20,000. So normally chairman is aware of the fact that nowadays many professionals are, you know, Professionals are loyal to the professions, their profession, rather than loyal to the organization. Organization. Okay, then candidate, how long will it take for me to reach the post of HR director if I perform excellent? And chairman, I can't say exactly when, but I can say that your continuous excellent perform will lead to achieve your career goal within four or five years. Okay, you know, that was the response of the candidate. Okay, I accept your offer. An example of integrative bargaining. Both, uh, you know, got a win-win solution. Right. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> this uh, learning unit, Another subtopic dealing with difficult negotiation situations. So negative behaviors and tactics, you know, there are. So, uh, so I have given a list of, partial list of, so thanks to Dasko and Robinson. So you know, I, I, I mentioned their partial list of examples, which show negative behaviors and tactics, which usually you know, come across in negotiations. Yelling, bullying, physical intimidation, ultimatums, verbal abuse, silence, and all these things. Okay, so ultimatums, what is ultimatums, you know, include statements implying the threats of serious penalties to the other party. If the terms offers are not expected, assume, you know, I am the top manager in an organization. You know, you are the trade union leader. Now, you know, you, you ask for a salary increase for uh, trade union members. Then I am the chief executive, or the, I am the powerful person, and then I will tell that, you know, uh, we will we will increase. Okay, we will increase salaries, but only by five percent. If you don't agree, then I will have to stop doing business. Then I will have to close this factory. Then I will have to take this factory to India, where you know I can get the work done through employees by paying lesser salaries, even by fifty thousand. By 50% lesser salary, something like that. an example of ultimatum. Ultimatum, threatening, you know. But then effects, of course, you know, if you face, you know, these things, assume you are the negotiator. So if you face these things, definitely these things will affect you. 
and whether you are going you know whether you are going to be successful in negotiation or not these things will affect right definitely you do not feel comfortable that's the you know you, you do not feel comfortable you may feel angry hurt frustrated confused trembling worried yeah you may use avoidance style or accommodating accommodative style what is avoiding style that means you give up negotiating you go away accommodate accommodative style or that means you give the winning to the other party and then you become yourself a loser by letting the other party become a winner so then so then yes then how do you respond yes style you know strategic responses according to gasco and robinson you can see stimulus you can say you can read this one so then i will skip that leaving for your self studies then stimulus is a negative behavior tactic used by the other negotiator you want good cop and bad cop that's a stimulus assume the other party uses that one that's a stimulus okay then you are you know the response then you have to respond which naturally happens within you is anger or fear or some other feeling right then how to respond mainly there are two you know there are three three suggestions given by gasco and robinson the third one is the recommended one uh, i mean more the most appropriate one ignore the behavior but if you ignore them this may give a message to the other party that you are weak or this may work well so that means uh, the other party you know the other party is using a negative behavior then if you ignore the behavior the other party uh, may get confirmation about that other party's negative behavior then will continue and influence you, you know, to become a loser that may happen so therefore ignoring the behavior is not a good one but anyway it's a it's a it's a, it's a solution that you can take you know? then tactic back you may use the you may use this response reactively and angrily rather than appropriately or strategically then it's possible that your response escalates will increase exaggerate the conflict the conflict then okay confront the tactic or behavior and negotiate the process that's the thing confront the tactic or behavior professional so you should not let your response manage you instead you should manage your response interesting no never you never allow your response to manage you instead you have to manage your response this is applicable to use you know normal to our normal life force look at this one the stimulus negative behavior from the other part assume you know after working you went home then your spouse you know tends to i mean your spouse starts engaging in a negative behavior that's stimulus you know you came after working then you are tired maybe you are suffering from fatigue that is more than being tired normally and then your response automatically is anger you know anger uh aggressive you know aggressive response comes naturally within your body within your body then the solution is of course the break sit on your reaction in sack take one minute or two think and decide what to do rationally then you have to use you know you have to use your brain not emotion emotion already got within you created it came now you have to use your senses you know the mind right so also you must have emotional intelligence because if you have right emotional intelligence then you can realize that anger came fear came shame came so like why right then how to deal with the strong emotions and other strong emotions again you know the, the, these are 
some strategies ignore them so even some strong emotions when you ignore we discourage them now you can have some you know rules to discourage them some examples of ground rules you know you can create before the negotiation like you know do not interrupt when one is talking rule one the rule two use of respect to language is a must then rule three there should be an equal opportunity to speak then rule four respect the other person self respect etc okay so then that you know then the encourage and manage them so this is called validating emotional expression sometimes sometimes you let the person burst the let the person you know uh, be aggressive so that means you are engaging in validating the emotions of the other part so these three things you know in case of strong emotions can be used as a strategies to manage right okay then uh, next unit of learning ethics in negotiation i can uh, i can remember i delivered a special lecture separate lecture on ethics and hr but anyway you know uh, here the one the theory you know that is called the magnificent seven you know magnificent seven by professor hogsen in 1992 So you call you know there are the magnificence that means general moral principles seven moral principles you know have been given by this uh, author of sense for managers so then based on these seven in simple way so i uh, i wrote you know seven ethics one is uh, first one respect the other negotiate don't disagree the second one the other negotiate has the right to continue in negotiation or stop and go away negotiation is not a legal requirement it's not a compulsory requirement if the other party you know wants to give up then the other party has that right so remember that even you also have the right to stop any time you know the negotiation further negotiating and then give up and don't tell lies of course because of the honesty then honor the agreement and implement it as agreed tolerate diversity and accept differences in negotiation maybe uh, certain sentences you know there there may be a negotiator who can understand you know people are different then you have to tolerate then avoid doing evil very bad things then concern with the well being of the other negotiator especially in integrative negotiation Okay, then honesty in negotiating is a very important thing. Honesty, you know, uh, according to research, honesty did increasing sales. The honesty did uh, achieving success in negotiation. Honesty is an ethical requirement, also a legal requirement. Right? Then bluffing and puffing, these things also I discuss. Right. Okay, then the legal limits on negotiating behavior and agreement. So these are the due to disclose, self-dealing, fraud, unfair deceptive business practices, like you know listing a product for sale at a certain price but changing the customer, more charging, charging the customer more money for the same thing. You know, I also have experienced this person. Listing price is different from the actual price charge. that's a deceptive business practice an unfair business practice advertising one thing and giving another thing very popular example in you know organizations very you know, deceptive business practice was of saying availability of a product when it is not available actually maybe the information especially uh, on the internet online selling has not been updated undue influences undue influence duress and coercion okay then uh, <clears throat> legal contracts right committing you know, crime you know committing suicide committing homicide like you know, legal contract okay then these are some specific situations 
in uh, negotiation. Negotiation with labor unions, trade unions. So I have mentioned some, you know, useful recommendations or guidelines. And negotiating with job seekers. Negotiating a count offer with a valued employee. When a valued employee decided to resign from the organization. Job essentially, job exclude these things also, you know, have been discussed by me. At negotiating HR systems with peer managers. The negotiating with top management for getting approval for HR project. Then, of course, uh, negotiating with, you know, the, you know employees for uh, settling grievances, grievance handling. This is a HR and function, really. Handling grievances. Okay, all right. So then uh, we will do some activities. So I really skip these things. Uh, for the time being, I hope my not is self-explanatory. Self and it is learnable by you. So any questions if you have, then uh, you know, depending on our limited time, you know. I, in fact, I want to finish all the all the activities given. Up. So here the. So let us go to this one activity. Okay, an interesting activity like right this one. Activity two. Are you all right? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, then uh, activity two, a critical incident. An interesting activity, an actual, you know, actual critical incident. Happened uh, not in Sri Lanka, in a foreign country, right? Uh, Mrs. C is an old lady whose age is seven, 72, living in a 100-year-old farmhouse. She was a member of a well-respected farming family that had settled the town in which she lived. The grandfather was one of the few people who founded the town. A home which is very elegant is uh, located in a land that has garden, beautiful trees, and many natural things. The character of the town, however, was rapidly changing. In the last 30 years, the town had evolved from a rural agricultural community the bustling, you know, uh, suburban, suburban city, suburban city, you know, uh, the bustling means, you know, is busy, you know, hectic, hectic city. Uh, track homes, uh, malls, and commercial office development sprout around the woman's farm. The city she now lived in was a far cry from the rural farming town in which she was born. So that means, you know, so that's a very big difference between the time, the place in which she was born and now, you know, she is facing, she's encountered. And as a result of the changes occurring all around her, Mrs. C's home is one of the most valuable real estates in the region. So a very good place, you know, from the point of a businessman. Father of this lady was born in this house. And she has raised five children. So she's a mother of five children, you know. So even, you know, the uh, mother, uh, I mean, grand, grandmother, yes. Having ten children, grandchildren. The children had moved away. And it is harder for them to come to visit the mother of. We can assume that the, that information has not been directly given, but we can infer, you know, based on this. They must be busy. They are professionals. Maybe they are, you know, other business people. So they have no time to visit their mother. Harder for them. That means almost not. Uh, several commercial 
real estate developer approached her and tried to buy this house by offering a price which was twice the fair market value of the land and house. You know, several, you know, distributed, sorry, uh, several, several negotiators came, several negotiators came and then engaged in bargaining with her to buy, you know, to, to, to purchase, to buy the house and the land, the home and the land by even giving double price, twice the fair market. Some were masters of competitive negotiation, you know. Masters, that means they are real, they are experts of competitive negotiation, competitive bargaining, distributive bargaining alternatively. That means they are masters of, you know, uh, getting a win-lose situation, win-lose solution. She politely, but firmly, declined each offer. Then my question is, can you explain why did she decline all the offers? Assume that you are the next negotiator. How do you negotiate with her to get the land and home? Maybe let us have a short term discussion. Can anyone unmute and then respond? Uh, hi, sir. According to this case, uh, according to my point, yes, hello? Okay, you can have your point. Yeah. According to my point, she is alone. So, uh, son and the uh, siblings, all the people were away from her. So yes. she feel alone with that period. But these people coming for the business, not for the relationship or any kind of thing. So nowadays she need a close relationship with someone else. That means or some or grandmother like that. So if a person who is engaging a lot, that kind of a convocation might be, she might be engaged to give those things, I, according to my point, not in a business world. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I really appreciate your response. Yes. But anyhow, now, okay, you are the negotiator. Yes. Assume you are the negotiator. That means you are, you are, you are, you assume you are sent. You are sent by a businessman. Or you are representing your organization. Then your mission, your mission is to get the land with the home. Uh, that Therefore, means, then you have to you have to use business point. Yes, sir. Uh, that means I need to engage with some words which is gets uh, get to her with uh, close to her heart. That means uh, we are one family through the business firms. First of all, I, my point is to give a close relationship. That means we are one family. Oh, very good. Like that. After that, right. we can go for the business. But then uh, specifically, how can you do that? Okay, anyway, I appreciate your response. Thanks. Yeah. Right, then, uh, okay. Well, we can have like this, you know. Don't use, inter don't use distributive negotiation. Contra you know, competitive bargaining negotiation, it has not worked. Even some, you know, some masters of competitive negotiation fail. So therefore, uh, you are also going to fail if you use competitive uh, negotiation or distributive negotiation. So then the, the, the theory suggests you, so far, you know, according to what we have done so far, the theory suggests you to use first one, uh, cooperative negotiation. That is first, uh, like we say, first guideline. So first step. You have to use cooperative negotiation. Decide to use cooperative negotiation. That that means you know you have to gain a mutual. You know you should get a mutual gain. You should you should let this lady win. Also you have to win. And then uh, second step, introduce yourself in a polite, respectful way to this lady. You, know, you have to be as much as possible soft on this lady. Do not, you know, do not come first. Do not come to the substance of negotiation, the subject of the negotiation. 
which uh, which you know requires you to be hard because this is a business, isn't it? It's a business. You have to have a game. You are representing the organization. You know? uh, so therefore, you are supposed to win. There must be a significant profit for this. Right. Then third step, ask about her, her family, so that's a good strategy. Ask about her. Lady, seems that, you know, something, uh, seems that you know, something you have to use, you know. Tell me, like, you know, you can say, oh, what a wonderful home like this. So it's very clean and all you can trace, you know, the area, all these. Then uh, before that, you can start, you know, sorry to disturb you. I came to know several people came, you know, to see you and then uh, disturb you. So sorry for all these things. You know, so I'm a professional, but anyway, you can, you know, yourself identify. Uh, you can, you know, reveal your identity to her, you know, within a, by taking a very short time. And then, you know, you can, uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know exactly, but anyway, let me say, tell me, you know, about this wonderful, beautiful, but old house. I'm sure there is a good story to take. So normally ladies, this lady, you know, you can realize that this lady is alone. And then, you know, the, according to several cases, uh, I, I found that ladies and all people, you know, they are alone. Uh, if they find someone, you know, seemingly uh, polite person, respectful person, trustworthy person, then these, you know, all people, they tend to reveal so many things. By revealing so many things relating to their past, they grow, you know, satisfaction, a huge satisfaction. They become storytellers. So then, uh, you know, you will, you will be able to you may be able to encourage her talk like that. Third, you know, uh, I mean, come to the point, the business point. Uh, okay, then, because of the time limitation, so I will tell you the uh, actual solution given by, you know, uh, given by the negotiator who was successful in buying this land and the home. This person really, you know, convinced convince this lady in this way uh, you are you are now old you are you becoming old and older then you need a support but your children are you know your children are professionals they have no time generally they are busy and then if something happens to you there's no one to help you you know so therefore you do need support uh, you know in a, in a in a higher way in the future your know, body is uh, decaying, getting decayed. Maybe mentally you are strong. Maybe mentally you are happy. But physically uh, you are going down. This is the mere truth. You know? uh, so, the, so likewise. And then better to be with your children. Then what, what about, you know, uh, I, will, I will buy a new land for you. And then develop, uh, develop the same home. The, the, the home of the same appearance and also gardening all these things in the same way but that place that place is near to your children near to your children but not not really the you know part of your children's place because you know you should understand that these it, it, it does reveal that you know a lady like this needs independence lady like this you know Lady like this, you know, can afford living alone, has some necessities and other things, rich, you know, not, not depending on, you know, not, not depending on uh, the children. She is living alone. This type of lady, you know, does expect so-called independence, doesn't like to live under, you know, under children because she has, she is well off, she has things. You know, to, 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 to spend uh, the rest of her life until her death. She doesn't need, you know, finance and other things from her children. So therefore, that also we have to understand. Uh, then we can say, yes, you can have your own place. 
which is independent, which is not a part of your children's play. So therefore, in the, with independence, you can leave, but which is near to your children, so that you know they can visit you frequently. Also, another point is you are a grandmother, so then you know you can you know your grandchildren, grand grandchildren may be a driver of your happiness further. So therefore, why not associate with your grandchildren to a certain extent before you die? So something like another, another, you know, creating another need within her, so that you know she, she will change her stand, and then she will decide. She will decide to sell this one, and also you know she is proud of her, her history. She is proud of her father. You know, father was a legend. Father's father. The father of this lady was born in this house. She also was born in this house. She raised five children. Now she got this uh, home, you know, as a gift from her father. So therefore, that's a beautiful story, you know, uh, about the about the house, about the house. These things are sentimental, you know, sweet memory, sweet memory. Then she is proud of her past, her father. So therefore, then why not, you know, a suggestion like this? This actual negotiator did that. Uh, we will, you know, we will uh, develop a monument that will, uh, you know, remember the father's name, your surname, your surname. Then we will give your surname uh, as, you know, uh, we will, uh, as the name for our business. For our business. Also, we will establish a monument that will tell you know, your father. So then, of course, in, you know, she agreed to sell the land because you know by 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 engaging, by being polite, by using soft language on her, but by being firm on the matter on the matter on the land on the land, and also by Engaging in extensive communication, this negotiator was able to was able to reveal her uh, hidden interest, her frustration, her wants. When to you know successfully uh, beyond the line, beyond the line, beyond the line. Okay, so then the use of uh, integrative negotiation made this uh, negotiator successfully negotiate. Right. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> go to this one, activity four, the critical incident. Read the critical incident given and how do you evaluate the negotiation skills of the HR manager? Indian organization had no systematic performance evaluation system until very recent time. Last year, Human Resource Manager introduced, manager introduced a systematic performance evaluation system that involved two separate forms for appraisal of managers and non-manager employees. By the end of the evaluation period, three months, he received completed evaluation forms from all the departments, except one department. Having waited two weeks after the evaluation period, the human resource manager decided to contact the manager of the department through intercom. When asked about completed performance evaluation form, the manager replies thus, I'm very busy with important duties. I do not think the evaluation as an important work. This I believe will take a lot of time that I think is a waste of my time. Also, I do not think that evaluations will improve my department's performance. Generally, all my subordinates work satisfactorily. I have no problems about their performance. Should I actually complete these forms and send? Questions like that. The human resource manager did not expect such a reply from the manager. 
He answered, Yes, evaluations are very useful. All other department managers have already sent the completed forms to me except you. Please send them within this week. The manager replied with a little hesitation, I will try, but I am not sure. Okay, then how do you evaluate negotiation skills of the human resource manager based on what you have learned so far? So one can unmute and then respond. One is enough there. Yes. taking time so it means uh, maybe you are reluctant to respond without having an acceptable response i assume that okay uh negotiation is case of the human resource manager are at not good level not at at, at expected level you know we initially learned that you know human resource manager should be a, a negotiation member the human resource manager has basically three uh, three roles, three roles as an advocate, as a builder, and as a pra practitioner. The human resource manager should work with with this example. Uh, I don't think that the human resource manager is excellent in performing those expected roles. Expected roles. So this one, you know, the, okay, assume this is the, actually, this manager is genuine. Assume this manager is genuine. So assume what this manager said is right. Uh, then what is wrong? Where, where is the wrongness? Wrongness is with the system. Then, then it, you know, one reason is perform an evaluation scheme is working isolated. It is in isolation. It is not linked with other HR systems like a system of giving promotion, system of giving you know financial reward, incentives, salary increments, merit increments, normal increments. Also, system with uh, with the training, identifying training needs, training. If performance appraisal scheme is not linked with such HR functions. Of course, the benefits of the performance appraiser are not that much, are not that much. Then the managers like these, like this, they tend to, you know, suspect the utility of performance evaluation. That's why at several times I emphasize this HR bundle concept, HR bundle concept. Okay, so also uh, assume uh, things are not like that. Things are not like that. This HR scheme you know, is linked with some other HR functions. It's HR schemes, as you. So that means uh, the the scheme has been properly introduced with the right background. Uh, then, then can we you know how how do you criticize this manager? I am very busy with important duties. So one thing you know, remember, if you are serious about perform an evaluation that has a higher level of utility. So therefore, perform an evaluation is indeed a very important duty because it directly leads to increase productivity. I don't, I don't like to talk about you know various things in Sri Lanka because this is online uh, teaching. Uh, then uh, there will be an uploading uh, of the video. So therefore, uh, I, I reserve my some some certain things. Right. Anyway, so then the so therefore it will lead to you know productivity. So therefore, performance evaluation, you know, performance evaluation ideally is a very important duty of a manager. So assume uh, perform okay. Otherwise, at least, at least, at least for performance evaluation should be an important duty, if not a very important duty. 
because of, of the great utility of perform and evaluation. If it is done properly, professionally, systematically, we can get many advantages of perform and evaluation. Also like, you know, this one, you know, generally, generally all my subordinates work satisfactorily. He is satisfactorily working enough. You know, under strategic HR, we want to create competitive advantage through HR. Even under strategic management, we want to create competitive advantage and enhance competitive advantage, which is a sustainable competitive advantage. So then satisfactory working is not sufficient at all. We don't need excellent working, excellent job performance, excellent work performance. Otherwise, how can we be, you know, or better? How can we be the best? I have no problems about their performance. Maybe there are problems. You know, another, my another question is, without really assessing, without really assessing the job performance of subordinates, how do you know that there are no problems about their sub performance? Measuring is inevitable to achieve success of anything. Several times I mentioned, you know, at several places I have written in my notes. So I have no, so I have no problems about their performance. Maybe subordinates have problems, but they have not con they have not expressed. Maybe this manager is following uh, an autocratic leadership style. It doesn't encourage the subordinates to present their grievances, complaints. Perhaps there is no system of getting feedback. So in fact, if there is good performance evaluation, there's a system of getting feedback. Okay, so then, then what about then other managers, you know, all other managers, they have completed. Then this manager is an exception. Right. Anyway, uh, but talking like this, you know, all other managers have already sent the completed form to me, except you. It is, it is not that soft, you know. You know, regarding matters, we have to be hard. That is one principle that we learned from this lecture. But regarding people, you have to be soft. You know, by, by, by taking other managers' performance and then, you know, indirectly, this indicates that you are at a low performance. You know, you are not like other managers. Other managers could do that, but why not then you? You are really disturbing me, something like hidden, hidden, hidden message. <coughs> hidden message. Okay, so therefore, no need to use that one. You can talk about benefits of performance evaluation to a great extent. I mean, within, by using a short time, or maybe you can have a separate, you know, time, which is convenient to this manager. Or you can go to that manager's place rather than being at your, if you are the manager, at your office. Go to that manager's office. That also shows the importance of the matter. Also some respect to the manager. Usually these managers are line managers. They are busy with line works. That means producing the product. Uh, and then delivering the product to the customers. Okay, uh, <clears throat> right. This one, another one. Activity one. Miss Dilhan. She's an executive assistant in a consulting firm owned by you. She has been working you for you since 2009. In fact, she's hardworking and her performance is excellent. As she has not received any salary increment so far, she wanted to discuss about this with you. You're very busy. And in fact, you have no time to think about this matter. As a matter of fact, you're not aware about this due to your work loss. She likes you, but she has fear about discussing this matter with you. She tried to meet you several times, but all attempts went in vain, not getting a chance of meeting you. Every time she wanted to meet you, 
she were engaging in a telephone discussion i mean you were you were engaging in a telephone discussion or discussion with someone or waiting something serious the one day she got courage and went to see him she thought she had a matter to be discussed you replied okay not now can you please meet me at another time i need full concentration on this i have to submit this report tomorrow she got somewhat angry but control herself and left the room she stayed sullen sullen you know in single we call bummagini you know mood mood is not good sullen and angry for several days today she got resignation letter sorry you got her resignation letter informing that she would leave your company by one month's time in order to accept another job for by one of your competitors not a, one of your compa- not simply an another organization but a company can you explain why did you face this problem how could, could you have avoided this problem is this a problem is this a problem of course this is a problem because this is a, an employee turnover employee turnover of an excellent employee and that is called dysfunctional turnover this is not functional turnover so what do you mean by functional turnover if a poor performer resigns and then that is an advantage to the organization that's why it is functional uh, turnover but this is an excellent employee so therefore leaving of an excellent employee from the organization in terms of a resignation is really a loss to the organization therefore this is dysfunction you know specifically there will be a vacancy that needs to be filled then in order to fill that vacancy you have to engage in recruitment in selection in hiring in induction so all these things are expensive they take time they take money they take your effort you know which has that effort has an opportunity cost because you have many other works assume you are really very busy okay then then uh, then assume this this employee had been given training a good extensive training an extensive training then uh, then uh, then that means you know assume if you keep this employee you can get the benefits of that training for another 2 years from this employee but now she is going to leave then you are going to lose the opportunity of getting benefits from the training given to her so likewise you know you can analyze so therefore this resignation is indeed a loss to the company that needs that needs to be avoided stop then how you have to engage you have to engage in negotiation okay then here the guidelines like this okay so this is one negotiating count offer with a valued employee are uh, these these you know principles these guidelines are useful for that negotiation maybe job essentiality is not that high maybe job exclusivity is not that high you know person like this maybe it is you know if you can easily hire there are substitutes so then there is no difficulty of replacing this type of person but anyway expensive you know doing recruitment again selection again and all this because an excellent performer right then uh, <clears throat> that's why you know the right time you know engaging in communication at the right time is an important thing when you manage people when you manage people managing managing a person also is an important thing this person could have you know this person could have engaged in communication could have listened to this person otherwise this problem would have not uh, been faced by this person
and then then now the you know the her, her value has become more then to keep her you have to uh, give something more you have to sacrifice something more because now you are reacting to the problem but without using proactive you know approach you use reactive approach always reactive approach to solve a problem is more expensive than proactive approach to solve a problem okay then uh, <clears throat> any questions okay this is uh, a simple very simple one activity five assume that you are a human resource consultant you have to negotiate with a potential client a large company for a work that involves preparing job description and job specification for all the jobs available in the company what is your partner in this case anyone can anyone respond your partner you know you have to negotiate with a potential client a large company for a work that involves preparing job description and specification for all the jobs available in the in the company preparing jd and js is an important thing for every job there must be jd there must be js now for a, to see a good human resource management this is a must this is a must preparing jd and js for all the jobs so that means in this organization they are not available so therefore they have understood the importance of having them and then they have decided to do it and then one option is to give this work to a uh, to a consulting firm to a consultant yeah. so that you are a human resource consultant you have to negotiate with right okay <clears throat> large company for a work so assume you are a human resource consultant here yeah. and then what is your partner your partner is you know if you do yourself then how much will it be how much will it be and then the you know the fee for the client potential client assume you are a human resource consultant and you have to negotiate with the potential client for work right yes potential a large company consulting firm yes uh you you know okay we can we can see like this uh you can do assume okay assume i am the human resource manager i can do this work myself instead of doing by myself i can you know i can give this works to another organization as a consultancy work and then i have to pay for that on on behalf of my organization i have to pay for that then i have to you know i have to consider the real you know the real the price given to that organization if i give that work to that organization to do and then you know the the the, the work if i do that the quality of work and the quantity of work if i do Now that is my partner you know your your one if i can do myself rather than giving it to another organization to do so if my negotiation as i assume uh the the, the negotiator you know negotiator is uh, really asking for 100 as the consultancy fee but i am ready to uh pay only 70 that is too much and then i can give up because i have butna the best possible alternative i have i can do myself but you know i assume that i have the right time you know i have the right effort and all this okay any questions the time is 11:19 
Okay, then uh, <clears throat> shall we start now? Uh, <clears throat> I will send an email uh, to you tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Then please uh, read it. Uh, right. If you don't have any question, then let me finish this one. And okay, then wish you all the best. See you soon. Okay, so thank you. In person. Thank you, sir.